Hey hoteliers, if you like the content we do here, please subscribe to this channel. The faster we grow, the more content I can get out to you. Now today we're returning to a very fashionable topic, one which we've spoken about before, which everyone in the world is talking about, quite frankly, artificial intelligence. Nay, artificial intelligence for hoteliers. Everyone is talking about it. Well, everyone except my mum only talks about my intelligence and generally as a negative. Hello darkness, my old friend. Seriously though, consider this a sequel to this video here, which was about artificial intelligence for the hospitality professionals. We did it a few months back. It was very speculative and very interesting at the time, but let's face it, we made it in the early days of AI. This one is much more grounded. A superior sequel, you might say, like Terminator 2, and to a lesser extent, Charlie's Angels 2, Full Throttle, or Babe, Pig in the City. That'll do. So let's lay it out for you here. Also, remember, if you're more interested in one part or another, we've got it all chaptered, so feel free to flick between the parts. Though, of course, I recommend you watch the whole thing. First, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to how AI language learning models work and what's so great about them. Second, I'm going to talk about the two uses for AI for your property that you can get started with today with minimal tech know-how. Thirdly, and probably most importantly for those of you who want to get ahead of the game and maybe save some money in the long run, I'm going to tell you about a space to watch in terms of using this technology and hospitality going forward, so make sure you stay till the end. So first, let's quickly go over what we're dealing with. Now those of you not interested in the history of it all might as well just jump to chapter two, but I assure you it's worth knowing, it'll make it easier to understand if you want to make these tools a significant part of your business going forward. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. Artificial intelligence is, in essence, a computer that can perform human tasks, by which I mostly mean weighing up information and making decisions. The earliest versions of this started with something called symbolic reasoning. Basically, you would have a piece of information, fruit is good, for example, and if you feed it another piece of information, such as banana is a fruit, the intelligence would reason that, ah, bananas are good, and they are. Attention, I am removing all bananas from the kitchen. Fast forward 70 odd years and now we've got ChatGPT, which deals in natural language processing, it's called. This means that it reads the sentence you put into it, detects the language, and searches its database to put together what might be the most satisfying response to your question. Now take that in for a second. Its database is basically the entire internet up to 2021. It uses that database to find information to figure out what way to present it that a human will find it satisfactory. I mean, in a sense, it's the ultimate concierge. And more on that later, by the way. Now, to all of you out there that are going, but it gets things wrong, or it doesn't know restaurants, remember this. The internet is full of contradictions and wrong information. It does its best with what it has and you can take control of what it has if you like, as I said, I'll get to in the last part of this video. Ooh, spoiler. Now, what can you do with AI to benefit your hotel today? Two things. First, you can put together a fairly decent, useful demand calendar, more or less in an instant. Now, for those of you in the dark, a demand calendar is basically a spreadsheet that indicates to you how things ought to be going at a given time of the year, business-wise, based on data from previous years and present climate. Very sophisticated, very useful. Now, things like this are what GPT is great with. They are established methodologies rather than disputed facts, and as a result, the results are instantaneous. People will have a very hard time getting kids to do maths homework ever again. But on the upside, any hotelier with a decent spread of data will be able to produce a demand calendar without so much picking up a pen or a paper or a calculator or whatever. It'll all be there for you, GPT will produce it. Exhibit A, I have for you here three sets of data for a fictional hotel on the same week for the last three years. I've gone with date and day, number of bookings, occupancy overall, lead time or when they booked in relation to to the stay itself, cancellations or no-show, average daily rate is there, revenue is there, segment, channel, events, weather and data, and competitor pricing. It's a lot, I know, and the information can be a slog to collect, but it's worth it when it's done and you're doing a job yourself that many establishments hire a full-time employee to do, revenue management. 
By the way, anyone after a more in-depth look at revenue management and how it works, look no further than our free, at the time of recording that is, probably not forever, revenue management course over at the hotel club. There's lessons and homework, but we made the homework before we figured ChatGPT might be able to do it for you, so maybe we need to revise that part. Anyway, I pop my data in, no need to format. Remember, this software figures out how to read whatever you put in front of it, and just ask for a demand calendar like this for the next year, and wham! Would you look at that? Poetry in motion. Wow. 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 Now, you might be asking how that could be of use to you, and I could just refer you back to the free course, but no. You're taking the time to watch, and I'll take the time to answer. Firstly, because I can hear the FAQs coming, let me say that you don't have to keep the data on GPT. Though you can easily enough. But I'm with you on this. I like my stuff the way I like my stuff. Google Sheets in my instance, maybe you prefer your stuff in Excel, whatever. You add it to both in the exact same way from GPT. So you just copy the code file there, like that. You open up Notepad if you're on Windows, or Text Edit if you're on Mac. And you paste it in and you save it as plain text. That's very important. And then after that, you simply import the file and the data sorts itself out. Once your personal preferences are in order, you can read it in all sorts of ways that are very intuitive. So let's say your lead time average is out at uh, two weeks and you've sold less rooms sold than normal and it's 10 days before that day. Considering lowering the price slightly. Uh, consider marketing hard to one of your segments. So many options. How do I know? I actually just asked ChatGPT that even though I know it already. I, I like, I, I asked it generally though. Spoiler, I'll tell you at the end how you can set it up to specifically ask about your own property. Yes, that's right. The next great use for it is creating marketing personas. Now this is so interesting. Really, if you've never heard of these, you may well roll your eyes, but they work like no one's business, guys. So listen up. Marketing personas are basically made up individuals with certain characteristics that you keep in mind when you're creating some marketing, right? Now, the main reason they're super useful is it, it allows you focus on the mood and the tone of your marketing and the, the information you're conveying, who's gonna be hearing it, you know? Because you can't think of about every single person. You have to categorize if you're gonna be efficient. You can only market to three different ways, you know? I mean, in the future, you'll probably be able to market to everybody individual by way of their, or the iris of their eye or, or something like that. But for the moment, you just gotta pick a view. And marketing personas is the most surefire way to do that. But again, you need a data set, guys. Also, it's kind of difficult to come up with them on your own. I mean, you're not a marketing expert. Maybe some of you are. I'm certainly not. I mean, I've got a, some experience in hospitality and I've done my studying. I know what marketing personas look like, but the fact is they're not easy to put together. You got to write a little story and if you're not creatively inclined, it can be difficult. But you don't need to be creatively inclined, guys, to collect data can put surveys in your room. Surveys when people book, by the way, which is another thing ChatGPT can write for you very easily, but that's neither here nor there. That one's quite obvious. So here's what, let's say, what, what would be the appropriate data set? You would need a booking ID, you would need gender, you would need marital status, job, where you're from, the channel they booked on. Here's one I prepared earlier again, all my data sets laid out here. And once again, I just click and I ask, chat GPT to put it together for me. And it does, it does it very effectively. There I have my business traveler, Bella. Won't I market directly to her? How might I market directly to her? You can ask chat GPT if you like, but it'll tell you down here when it, it tells you preferences and what they like to do. To market to her, you might target advertising in her area, if that's where they're generally from, and show a picture of all the desks you have ready for business travelers to work at, you know? You might have a leisure traveler, Pete, who happens to be single, you, you could show you know, relatively single dude relaxing by a pool, discount in their direction, that kind of thing. The point is, they're not the most easy thing to get off your arse and do because they are an act of the imagination, but they're a useful one. And when they're there made for you and you don't have to pay for them, you just did it with ChatGPT, well, it'll save you a lot of money and time. And in the end, it'll make you more money because you'll be able to market more effectively, thanks to ChatGPT. Number three, I promised you something. This is the way to get into ChatGPT if you wanna to look to the future, if you wanna get in on the ground floor of something, okay? Because the fact of the matter is, I mentioned it earlier, but ChatGPT, like AI language learning models, are the way of the future when it comes to hospitality in so many ways, but they're like the ultimate concierge. Guess what, they can be the ultimate concierge, right? So what I mentioned before is, this is a language learning model. 
it'll detect the language you talk to it in and it'll try to answer you in that language based on a certain set of data. As it happens with GPT, that data set is the internet up to 2021, right? You can alter that data set. All you need to do is pay for a little bit of software called an API. Now an API, it's a piece of software that allows pieces of software to chat to one another, right? So you can alter the database to make the database about, let's say, you can have one for the homepage of your hotel that is all about your hotel and the surrounding areas, update it regularly, update it with TripAdvisor, update it with the program of the nearby theater, whatever you like. All you gotta do is pay for the bit of software and keep it updated with regular data sets. Now, at the moment, these are, I don't know, they're not as common as they certainly will be, so they're not as user-friendly as they would be, but they'll also never be as cheap as they currently are because it's a very tech-savvy thing to know about. Now, you can learn about it handily enough. I'll probably put together a video of it in the future. But get this, if you get up to date with things like APIs and data sets, you can have a virtual concierge for your hotel that your guests can access any time just like texting you. It'll probably be even more friendly than you because it doesn't get tired or anything like that. The ultimate concierge. That's what's in the future, guys, okay? It's well worth your time and it's well worth a Google. I hope this video was well worth your time. If it was, please like it. If it wasn't, thank you for staying all the way till the end. Please comment and tell me uh, why it wasn't. Comment regardless, guys. I wanna hear from you, okay? Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.